This week on the Computer Chronicles, digital photography. We'll show you the hottest new camera, the Epson 750Z. You'll see the coolest new digital printer, the Color Shot from Polaroid, and the best digital imaging software that can turn even you and me into professional photographers. And we'll show you some great web resources that solve many typical photography problems. Plus, my pick of the week, a 3D design tool that's a great combination of fun and science. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, we have come a long way since this little thing first came out, the first consumer digital camera from Casio. It cost a lot of money, had lousy resolution, and lacked almost all of the features you would expect in a good camera. But that was ages ago in digital time, and we now have what is really a digital revolution in still photography, similar to what we went through when camcorders replaced 8mm film movie cameras. And uh, Lisa, you are with Epson, and there's a zillion digital cameras out there right now, but a lot of the writers are saying one of the best new cameras out there is your Epson 750Z. So I want to ask you why. And I've heard a couple of things about it, so let me go through some of the features, can I? Great. Yes, uh, great. All right, number one, uh, you claim you can do actual 8 by 10 photos with this little camera. It's got really high resolution. How do you manage that? That's correct. We have a 1.25 megapixel sensor, which mm -hmm. is 1280 by 960 pixels. And through our new image enhancement technology, High Picked, we're able to take those original pixels and create 1600 by 1200 pixels. So you effectively have 1600 by 1200, which gets us something like that, which is really quite phenomenal. If we can get a shot of that 8 by 10 picture of flowers, uh, I mean, couldn't have done that a couple of years ago. That's right. <laughs> Add a little digital cameras. Okay, so we got high res. You can do 8 by 10. A <coughs> uh, couple of things. That has an optical zoom, one of the things a lot of the early cameras don't have. That's correct. And what, what is kind of zoom lens on that? This is a three-time optical zoom lens. That'll give you 35 millimeters to 102 millimeters. Okay. So you're able to take pictures both close up and far Real away. Real camera. Correct. All right. Another thing, a lot of the problems with some of the digital cameras, the little LCD displays, uh, they consume a lot of battery mm -hmm. power, number one. They're slow and jerky when you move around. You've improved that on that one. Explain that. That's correct. We have a high quality LCD monitor which allows you to view your images in real time. As so there's well no lag as you pan around and look at different No, things. not at all. In fact, if you just move the camera back okay. and forth here, you can see. Sure, it's like a movie camera. Correct. And you've got a, something called mm -hmm. Solar Assist, which is cool. Explain that idea. That's right. This is our sunroof for our <laughs> LCD monitor, if you will. So you actually use sunlight mm -hmm. to illuminate the LCD. Rather than battery energy. Correct. Okay, so if, you, if you're in the sun, mm -hmm. which most of us are when we're taking pictures, you save battery life that way. Exactly. Speaking of batteries, uh, that's another weakness in these things. They do consume a lot of battery. You're stuck on the road, and if it's rechargeable, you don't know how to do that. What's your solution here? Well, we have a great pocket-sized charger. This is a nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery. So turn that around. So the plug batteries. is actually built in there. Correct. So you can just stick that in your little photo bag. You can even put it in your pocket. Okay, now can you use regular batteries or are they only those rechargeable? You can use double A size batteries, or alkaline, or use the rechargeable batteries. All right, now what's the memory and storage story in here? Again, a lot of the problem is mm -hmm. you run out of memory when you're out there in the field, or you forgot your little card, or you didn't have an extra card. How do you store pictures? Right. The Photo PC 750Z has 12 megabytes of memory, mm -hmm. so we have both 4 megabytes of internal memory and an 8 megabyte compact flash card. And this 8 meg compact flash card inc and the 4 megabytes of memory will allow you to store 164 pictures. Well, oh, so, but even if I mm. got, forgot that little thing, I still have internal memory, so I have sort of backup memory inside also. That's right. If I'm doing 8 by 10s like this, mm. I'm guessing that takes a heck of a lot of memory. Is that right? right? You can store 16 of these high resolution okay, images. Okay, so in the, really, in the high res mode. Uh, let's see what else. Now you can also do direct printing, right? I don't need a computer to print from this. I can go into your Epson printer? That's right. We include the software that you need for direct print as well as the cable. This cable hooks right into the camera and mm -hmm. you're able to directly print from the camera to the printer. Only to an Epson printer? That's correct. Okay, so it's your little package of the Epson camera and the Epson printer. Right. So no PC needed. That's correct. So you save your money right there. 
Right. Uh, another question is something called quick shot. Again, a lot of these you have to wait a long time till it's ready to take your next picture. That's not true with this? That's correct. You can take a picture within three seconds of the last picture that you took, even in the 1280 by 960 mode. All right, last thing, which is really cool, I just want to show here. You guys are very clever on the print side. You have this little thing here. I'll hold this one. Oh, not to a little sticker printer, right? Because kids have all these little stickers, so That's you can take right. a picture and turn it into stickers and just rip, peel these things off and put them on your uh, book at school or whatever? That's correct. All right, thank you, the 750Z. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, well, first time uh, you take the picture, of course, with a camera, the catch with digital photography up until now has generally been that next step printing the picture. Usually it means expensive printers, costly color ink cartridges, high priced paper, and even then you rarely got the quality you could get from your local one hour Photoshop. And I guess you guys at Polaroid, you're really uh, the instant printer company, really, as much as a camera company. You've come up with a solution with your really tiny little color shot printer. What's, what's the deal? What's different about this one? It certainly looks different. Well, it's, uh, it's the first printer in the world that prints on true photographic film. What so does that mean? That means that we've taken uh, Polaroid Spectra film. It's that the same Polaroid film you'd use in a Polaroid camera? Absolutely the same. And we've made a different variation called Polaroid Color Shot Film. Both work in the Color Shot printers. All right. Now, by as I understand, this film is actually cheaper than the regular Polaroid film, right? Right. Regular Polaroid film, if if you recall, in order to take a Polaroid picture, it requires a battery to power built that into picture the film thing, built yeah. into the film pack. So if we can take that battery out and uh, you know slim down some of the packaging, we can make it less. All right. Expensive. Can we actually print a picture? Sure. Uh, absolutely. While we get going, in fact, I'm all queued up right here, so <laughs> I'm just going to hit the print button. And in fact, uh, this will take 15 seconds uh, to Put print picture this picture. Put picture out there. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can see the color shot uh, is blinking right now. Um, the uh, color shot printer is available in either a USB version, which is the charcoal, mm -hmm. or a putty version, and which is the parallel. Picture. There's right, our Polaroid so this, picture. And typical, we sit here and wait a couple minutes till the two minutes comes out. It'll fully develop. Here's some samples of uh, pictures that we've already done. With uh, with our color shot okay, printer. Okay, let's just hold them up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty good looking stuff. Yeah, so these are these are from stock photo or uh, photo mm -hmm. CD images that we printed on the color shot, and then as you move along, we'll take um, you know here's a uh, some pictures that we. Oh, that's okay. great. Yeah. Yeah, photo that. CD. Um, w this is directly from digital cameras, mm -hmm. uh, popular digital cameras like Epson or uh, Polaroid or Agfa or Kodak. Uh, now let me ask you about this little watermark thing. How does that get on there, Bob? Uh, well, we've we've jumped ahead to our new Direct Connect accessory. Okay, what is and, this? Uh, Let's hold this up so we can show this. Yeah, what is this, this about? This ninety-nine dollar accessory allows you to directly connect you, either of your Polaroid Color Shot printers to popular so digital cameras. So then, like we cameras. saw with Epson, you don't need a computer in the middle. Absolutely, uh, and we have a whole laundry list of popular digital cameras that we support from uh, from Epson and Agfa, Olympus, and Kodak, on, and on and on. So you can print directly to your Color Shot without being connected to the computer. And okay. with, the, with the Direct Connect accessory, we have the watermark capability. So when you set up your Direct Connect for your camera, you can insert text or a logo that will print on every picture that you print. All right, now what are all these buttons doing on this little thing? Okay, this button is going to take us through as we're uh, hooked up to the camera here. And, and I don't know if you okay, can see I can the just LCD. Press that and, just and it advances okay, so the screen. I can control the camera from this thing. Right, and if you double click really quick, mm -hmm. you'll go backwards. Okay. And this button here will allow us to print one picture. All the this, pictures that are in the camera? And this will print the 36 up thumbnails of all the pictures all right. that are stored in your now, camera. Now, explain how this all works. I can imagine in a Polaroid camera, at least I assume, I was sort of exposing the Polaroid film there and then printing that film. How are you getting the picture kind of inside this film here? Boy, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I, and truly, I don't know. It's a, you know, it's a, I'm sure, a closely okay. guarded secret within Polaroid, but we are taking that digital image and exposing the Polaroid film hmm. uh, in 15 seconds. I mean, this is kind of a Polaroid camera in here, I guess, in a way, mm -hmm. right? Yes. In fact, if we wanted to load uh, uh, a new pack of film, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have one here, but uh, this is the pack of hey, film. It looks, yeah, exactly. It looks exactly the same. In fact, we, right. could, we could grab one okay. of these and load it up in there. It just sticks hmm. in there. There's no toner. There's no ink. There's no developer. So the ink, as in Polaroid film, is really inside the film itself. That's why there's no ink cartridge to buy or any of that stuff That's we correct. have in typical printers. Right. It's called integral film. The chemistry is all yeah. integral to the film. And how much does this thing cost? Uh, these list for $299. Both are the same price. 
Uh, street price, of course, may vary, and they ship with MGI Photo Suite and one 10 pack of Polaroid Color Shot And here's your Michael film. Jordan picture, which, to be fair, you pulled from the web, right? You yes, I did. That, yes. You? So you can do web printing, too. You can download <laughs> pictures from the internet, your favorite movie stars, your favorite sports stars, being from Chicago. Guess who I picked? <laughs> All right, thank you, Bob. Well, whether it's writers, composers, or artists, there is a natural tendency to resist new technology. I guess it's printing. <laughs> and to uh, sometimes want to do things the old-fashioned way because sometimes the new stuff is threatening. When it comes to photography, though, even the pros are embracing the new power of digital cameras. Lynn Bishop is an artist from Northern California with an urge to travel. Her journeys can take her across the globe or across the street to the Hakoni Gardens in the hills above Silicon Valley. But wherever she goes, Lynn carries her tools with her. In one backpack, she can stuff an Apple Power Book, Olympus digital camera, drawing tablet, tripod, and a jumble of accessories that make up her portable studio. Taking that with me in a backpack on my back and uh, able to capture the moment of inspiration and get instant feedback on it. Uh, what I found when I was using an analog camera is that I'd have to wait until I came home to have the photos developed and I was uh, a little bit removed from the feeling at the moment uh, when I took that photo. So having the digital tools with me uh, really allows me to get a little bit more intimate with the images in real time. Lynn doesn't need much room to set up her portable studio. A front step and a roof to keep out the rain will do. She pops the photo disc from her camera and slides it into the PowerBook's PC card slot. From there, she has instant access to her photos, as well as a suite of software tools, including Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. There's always things that you can do better or differently in, back in your studio, but the purpose of uh, the backpack of software and hardware is to be able to give some mobility to the artist so that, the, so that me, the artist, isn't necessarily stuck in my studio all the time. Lynn had a chance to give her backpacker studio the acid test during a two-week journey across China by train and bus. Out of the trip came photos, artwork, and a website featuring QuickTime VR panoramas. The whole China trip was really um, an amazing experience because like I said earlier, I could get intimate with the images I was capturing in real time and I could um, begin to formulate ideas for the artwork I wanted to create. And also wanting to then uh, share with e people the tool set that I took. I, you know, I think that this is a very accessible tool set. It's not a tool set that requires hundreds of thousands of dollars. Lynn is devoted to her digital tools, but she has not abandoned some traditional kinds of media, including paper. For a long time, I would do art for myself, and it would stay on my computer, or maybe I'd put it on my website. And there was a real moment of revelation when I was able to take those images and really put them on a piece of paper and put a frame around them and hang them on my wall. That was a totally different feeling. While Lynn, the photographer, likes digital technology, Lynn, the artist, still finds a need to get her hands dirty with something analog once in a while. I still love to paint with brushes and, and paint and love to take photos with my analog camera, but I think I'll always be using technology. It's, um, it's too much fun. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. The real beauty of digital photography is that it lets you get inside the picture and change it, improve it, or just play around with it and have some fun. Digital photography software is really the ultimate creative tool, and our expert today on how to use this software is Owen Linderholm of Windows Magazine. Nice Welcome, Owen. We've, talked, we've picked three pieces of software I want you to go through very quickly. First one is Photo Suite 2 from uh, MGI, and you have it up here, which right. lets you actually do things with the pictures, right? Change them and manipulate them and turn them into other things. Right. You can do things like, uh, for example, I have a picture of my daughters here. We can rapidly cut them out from the, ba the background of the Christmas tree. I'm just going to start 
So it comes with a tool that lets you sort of cut out yeah. just the girls. Just and take the them girls. Out of the it, it's smart. It knows where the edges of the girls All right, are. So you've so. done that before, so I'll let you sort of just jump ahead. Okay. So now here's a, here's one I, I example I cut out a little bit so ragged, but that no more background. No more background. You can then take this and drop drop, drop it into it another in background. another background. What are you, so what are you trying to build here? We're trying to build a greeting card. This could uh, be a Valentine's card so or maybe a or birthday, maybe a birthday card, card, whatever we want. So, so you now, put them behind another image there. Right. We've just, uh, or you could put them on a beach if you wanted to pretend that sure. they were in their Christmas dresses on the beach sometime. Um, same technique that's used to make all kinds of famous <laughs> people look artificial look reality. Healthy, here, that's right. right. So then we switch the project window where we've pulled up a greeting card. In this case, so a birthday added some card. Balloons and you added some, and all the stuff you could have done inside uh, Photoshop. Yeah. And you can just move the picture around, get it to a ha however you like. Now you've got a birthday card. And uh, you can print this out on, an, on any inkjet printer, and it will look great. Right. And it shows you can do slideshows, uh, create albums, do internet stuff, anything you right. want. Right. You can go on the internet, get um, advice, new photos. You can make slideshows to show okay, on the so screen. This is your favorite image ed editing software. Yeah, that's now. right. It's got a w wide range of features. All right, let's, move to, let's move to the next one, which is really fun, called Instant Photo Artist, which lets you take a photo and kind of makes you think you know, you're a real painter. Right. Yeah. What you do is you load up some photo you really like that you want to turn, maybe you want to show off to your friends what a great landscape painter you are. Right, so on the left there, that's the that's the digital photo we took. Right. So we were on vacation, we took a photo, but now we want to make it look artsy. Right. And let's say we want to pick a one of the many built-in styles they have. We can be an impressionist, we can be an oil painter. Right, so who do you want to be here? Well, let's be Renoir, Renoir for the sake okay. of things. So it's got the intelligence of what Renoir mm. would do. Right. So you don't have to really know anything about art? No, you don't have to know Just anything scrape at all. along. Now you can go with broad brush strokes uh -huh. and you'll start to see background emerge. This and is and a little bit you're doing nothing, if you'll pardon the expression, intelligent. I mean, you're just scraping through this thing. Right? You don't right. know what you're doing. You don't have to know anything. And then you just <coughs> paint away, paint away, paint away, and you'll start to see the outline of the photo of the image mm. emerge, and it looks like a painting. And if it's a bit too much so are you just sort of like brushing over the outline of the photo, I basically? I am, and they've given you, they and even you give you a little And you have the Renoir brush, if you will. That's right. And then I can, huh. if I want to make it a little more realistic, I can do that just as easily. You can start to bring out the details of the houses, and okay, all so of a quickly sudden, scratch through the rest of it though, just get some of that. And there you go, and, and you've turned that little photo over there into, into something that looks like uh, a, painting. a painting. Very easy to do, right. and you can do all kinds of styles. You've got paintbrushes, pencils, chalk, markers, <laughs> uh, ink pens. Tons of options. You can make it look like an oil painting. You can make it look like an old newsprint photo. Wow. All kinds of things. And then again, print that out, right? Again, print that out, export it to another uh, application, whatever Okay, you want to next do. thing I want you to show me is a piece of software called Photo Recall. One of the problems, I know you take all these digital pictures now, you dump them onto your hard drive, you don't know where they are, you don't know what folder they're in, you forgot what you called them or what that file name meant with regard to the picture. And this sort of solves that organizational problem, right. doesn't it? You can have uh, all kinds of photos all ki from all kinds of places, three photos of the same shot, all with something slightly different in them. You don't remember which one. You oh, know. So you've got like a little virtual photo album here, huh? Right. You can just page through, see some of the, so you see some of the pictures you've got. Um, you have, you're able to see the name of the photo okay, when So you can add that little text created. at the bottom and give a little caption for each one? Right. And you can go and get some information about this, this picture of the cat, for example. It says Darwin the cat. We could add a description, black cat mm -hmm. sit sitting on a shelf somewhere. And took this day under these the conditions, conditions or whatever, right. really into it. Um, we, can t we can put in special fields that say we're doing, planning a project on the family. We can have mm -hmm. a project, you know, fields So then I could search my photo album by these descriptors I I've put in in text. Right. So like, where was the picture of the black cat? Right, And it'll exactly. find it for me. Boy, and, that would be nice. And you can get information like the size. Huh the kind of photo it is and so forth. And you can build these photo albums really easily. It will even go and scan your yeah. hard drive and find all the pictures for them and bring them It in. recognizes image format extensions and does it? Yes. Wow, that's cool. I'll just bring them Roughly what do these things cost, Owen? Um, MGI Photo Suite 2 is about $100. Okay. Um, Instant Photo Artist is, I think, uh, in the $30 to $50 range. And um, photo Recall is, again, in the same Not kind of price deal, range. Right. They're all at most $100. Save your money for memory, right, in That's storage right. space. Right. The one thing you'll have noticed <laughs> is how slowly some of these programs come up. They need storage. They the need memory. Take a lot of files. All right, all right. Thanks a lot, Owen. Thank you very much. All right. Well, one of the reasons people are getting into digital photography is so they can directly publish their photos on the web or maybe send them electronically as emails. But the net is also a great resource for the digital photographer and our expert here is Bruce Fraser. Bruce Hi, is yeah. a writer, editor, author. You're kind of into this whole thing. 
I've been there since the beginning. I guess yeah. so. So uh, I want you to show us some of the really cool websites that somebody's getting into digital photography ought to go to. What's the first one? Okay, the first one is Camera and Digital, Camera and Darkroom Digital. This okay. is really an information resource for digital photographers. Uh, it's run by a good friend of mine, Andrew Rodney. Uh, he has things like Photoshop tips and tricks. He has a bunch of very So how to use some of the software Owen was just showing us and how yeah. to get the best out of your yeah. digital photos and so um, on. If you're interested in using the new color management schemes uh -huh. in Windows 98 ICM2 and you need profiles created for your devices, uh, they build profiles for you. Uh, a lot of Andrew's articles are available online. So, so a general um, sort of magazine for yeah. digital photography yeah. and advice on what so to do So it's just like, it's, it's a real good information Oh, resource. and a digital camera roundup, that yeah. would be cool. So you want to yeah. know what so camera got a, to buy. A good buyer's like guide. Um, he has an interesting comparison of film <laughs> versus digital. Huh. Um, and you know, it's not it's not entirely about digital cameras. Yeah. You can also use digital imaging sure. with so that's cameradarkroom.com. So, yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one now, which is Photoloft. Yeah. Photoloft is um, another site that lets you build a virtual album. But the difference is that rather than building a virtual album on your own hard drive. Uh -huh you can build a virtual album on their website. So I can store my digital photos up on their website. They exactly. give you some free storage exactly. space. Exactly. They'll give you 20 megabytes of free storage Just space. Start. And uh, then it makes it very easy for you to share your images with other people, rather than having to email them to individuals or set up an okay, FTP site. Okay, so this is sort of a cyberspace storage. Anybody can go yeah, to their website and, and look up and Bruce's images, yeah. for example. So th this is my, my album of my Eclipse photographs. Oh, this is your stuff? Yeah. Um, and you can also you can order prints. Uh -huh. uh, you know, one of the di one of the, the difficulties with digital cameras is you know how do we get an image off the right, screen right, into right. some kind of real form? So it's so literally a photo loft. Yeah, it's a place where photographers yeah. hang out yeah. and keep their photos. Yeah. So you can order prints, and then you can also order gifts online. Mm -hmm. um, that you can build. Put, you can put images oh, on so things like coffee mugs, watches, mouse pads. And so you can and upload your image, say, I want it on a mug, order it, and they'll send you the mug with yeah. a picture on it. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Yeah. And that's, that's the part where they make the money, of course. All right, now so. speaking of hard copy, go to Evercolor, because that, as you pointed out, is the, is the big issue here, okay. getting good quality, durable prints from your pictures. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the low-cost printers <laughs> have made incredible improvements over the last as couple of years. As we just saw earlier, yeah. Yeah, but longevity of the print is still an issue with So them. the issue is the print itself may fade after it may, a couple yes, of years. Yes, it will fade after a couple of so years. So what do you do about Evercolor that? Evercolor are fine art printers. Um, they offer two printing processes. Uh, the Luminage Direct Digital Print is um, a laser exposure onto photographic paper. They actually they use Fuji, photo, uh, Fuji photographic oh. paper. So again, instead of buying like, an expensive printer, I can just go to the Evercolor website and say, hey, print this picture for me at the quality and the cost exactly. I'm ready to go yes. for. Yes, this printer is like a $250,000 <laughs> printer. Okay, so I won't buy and it. And then if you, know, if, you're ne if you really need archival museum quality printing, yeah. they also do a pigment process, which mm. will last about 200 years. All right, years. lastly, I want you to show me the Stephen Johnson website because this is again uh, an example of how really pro photographers are doing great things with yeah, digital Steve, photography. Yeah, Stephen Stephen really takes digital photography further. Uh, he captures still images that are 5,000 by 7,000 pixels. 5,000 by 7,000 yeah. pixels. So he makes big 50-inch right. prints. Now and sh uh, show us the, the, the QuickTime VR aspect of that because that's yeah. He's also do started doing here. panoramas, um, which are quite interesting. Uh, they are again large images. Right, so that's um, a, big a full a size print kind of from thing. this image would be about 25 feet long. Okay. Um, and for web use, uh, what he's done is he's converted them to QuickTime VR files. And so you, so you can actually go in, you that. can navigate through well, them. That's great. I put a map in the middle, you can zoom in. You can zoom out. Bruce you Rattata, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's our look at digital photography. I'll be back in just a minute with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. Well, creating photographs with a digital camera is cool, but if you're fascinated by this mixture of science and art as I am, you'll really enjoy this new creative piece of software from Lucas Learning. It's a new division of Lucas Arts Entertainment. The program is called Star Wars Droidworks. And with this program, you build three-dimensional robots that have to perform certain assigned tasks. This is fun, 
challenging, creative, and science. For example, in the first assignment here, you have to build a droid which can shove a heavy box up a ramp. Not an easy task. You have to decide what kind of robot anatomy it takes to do that. Should it have treads for feet or human-like legs? Should it have powerful arms or flexible arms? Should its hands be sophisticated but consume lots of power or be simple and conserve power? What kind of head should it have to withstand damage or should it just be small and maneuverable? And what kinds of sensors should it have? These are the kinds of design questions you face in DroidWorks, especially when you get to try your droid out in the real world or at least on the planet of Tatooine. You will quickly learn that creating human-like creatures is not an easy task and takes lots of learning and lots of practice. This is a very clever use of the Star Wars characters and environment. It's a great learning game, the first product from the new Lucas Learning Group, and a winner. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with the latest in hardware, software, on the Internet. Thanks for joining us. I hope we'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.